Oil theft is one of the threats to Nigeria's revenue projections, and a new figure has been estimated for theft in the first quarter of 2022. Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, NUPRC, Mr. Benga Komalafe, has said Nigeria lost about 434 billion naira to oil theft between January and March of this year. Arise Business Analyst Chika Mbono joins us to discuss further. Chika, good morning to you. Thank you so much Hi, for joining us. Good uh, so we start with the banks, or where would you like to... Well, uh, let's talk about the banks. Yes, uh, and the CBN, huh? Yeah, it says, can the banks um, be the rallying point for CBN? And, I mean, uh, Nigerian banks have t t substantially transformed. I, I used to know uh, at a time when we used to say Nigerian banks were just basically LPO financing banks. Right. Once you bring a project that is, um, uh, you know, tenor is more than one year, uh, you know, and um, there are no immediate cash flows coming in, you find a lot of banks not uh, touch it. Mm -hmm. But uh, these days, you see a lot of Nigerian banks that are putting a lot of money into infrastructure and um, similar um, uh, manufacturing companies that you have um, lending programs that have substantial moratoriums. Yes. And um, ten or spreading over a long period of time, I, I, don't, I don't know. David and boys to to risk, and that's where the partnership with Central Bank and the the, the, the money banks uh, come into play. Yeah. Because what's happened in a lot of instances that the Central Bank, in in, in line with its development functions in the economy, mm -hmm. has um, these binoculars that they never them see, you know, earlier or faster than this deposit money banks. Yeah. Uh, because there are these really, paradigms are a little different. Yeah. You mean a profit motive, but because of the development of the country. And so a lot of times CBN has gone ahead to, you know, put money into, into these projects, mm. and then hoping that the banks will support. Um, a lot of companies took the initiative to move to the export uh, free zone, uh, but finance, uh, even at the best moment, seems going to be the problem. And that's what the, the, CBN, governor, uh, the CBN team is talking about. And you see, everything shakes hands. I'll just listen to your your rundown. Mm. You know, everything boils down to foreign exchange. Right. Foreign exchange. Now, non oil export, you know, is what where our salvation will lie. Mm. Because the oil that used to be the, you know, the 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 hen that lets the golden egg yeah. has been battered by the challenges that some of the challenges that you that have been mentioned. Mm. And so, even our last GDP report, you saw that oil GDP, the conditional oil, the GDP fell by 26 percent. What up for um, non oil export came, came moving by about 12, 13 percent. And so, that is where the issue is. And I keep saying that I, I, there's this, you know, uh, funny relationship we have in our GDP because oil that contributes a lot to revenue and foreign exchange is just about well, barely about 10 percent right. of our GDP, and non oil export is the largest portion of it. Mm. But the problem why it's not going to put a lot to revenues and foreign exchange is not sweating a lot because of the limiting factors they've had there. And that's part of the, part of the reason why um, the CBN team is pushing this. Mm. If you reduce limiting factors, uh, remember when the CBN launched the RT 200, FX, yeah. Yeah, 200 yeah. there were about four or five initiatives there. The first one was uh, long-term financing mm. for them to get infrastructure, equipment, and whatever required to Focus on um, um, export financing. Second one was working capital required to fund um, the day-to-day -day run of those, those, those companies. Uh, dedicated export uh, terminals. Yeah. Um, I think there's one or two other two other ones that they put in there. And then the exchange rates uh, issue yeah. that if you bring in uh, the price exchange, yeah, you get $65 yeah. on top. Rebate. You know, so, uh, you know, we'd love to know from CBN how that has... You know, uh, how people have responded to that. Mm. But the issue I keep saying for us is our salvation lies not in oil, but in pushing oil in export. And that's basically what CBN is pushing. Thanks. Um, oil, you want to talk about the oil theft number? The, even the CBN well, governor mean, has a quote on that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, uh, okay. Everything shakes on, I keep saying. Yeah. You know, the PIA was, when it was written mm. or signed, there was this clause there about for the host community development fund. Yeah. I think 3% three, three of the OPEX, uh, expenditures of the uh, IOCs, yep. we go to the com host communities. Now, look at it is, the oil companies need to what? Can, can, can only what? Invest. Yep. 
you need to provide them the, the community needs to provide them the environment for them to what invest yes because the fund are creating to this host community development fund depending on what the operating expenditures yeah if they're not operating the operating expenditures will be what will be low. low now why are they not operating they are closing down because of what the challenges in the operating uh, the host communities yeah. You saw the Minister of, Minister of State said the major challenge they have is their, their pipe, their, our pipelines. Mm. The pipelines are being broken yeah. and the illegal refineries are set up. So it's a chicken and egg situation. The communities have to make up their mind. But I, I, I keep saying, I said, I can't come from here where I am, off my town in Olo, and then head to somewhere in the uh, Niger Delta to go and start breaking, breaking pipes. It has to be that the people who are breaking pipes are in lo the locality. So mm. they have to understand that the host community development fund is for them. And make a decision as to whether breaking the pipes and getting the oil illegally versus this money that is dedicated to them, you know, the, the good decision they're, they're going to make. And, and that's the challenges that we will face because the IOCs in Nigeria are all leaving the onshore mm. and moving to offshore. offshore. And, and that's making a major problem for us. Look at it this way. Oil prices are one to one dollars per barrel mm. and we're, we're crying. One was supposed to be like, um, you know, ha happily running to the bank and rejoicing. Mm. It's a massive problem. And then, add on top of that, the issue of uh, subsidy. In fact, that's what a couple the minutes ago, the six trillion. Can we spend six trillion? Issue, issue of subsidy that you also, you know, and, yeah. you, you know, what, what can we, I mean, it's there, it's there. Listen, as the price of crude goes higher, yeah. the price of PMS, uh, that's petrol, as Nigerians call it, yeah. is going to also go higher. higher. So the landed price will be far away from this 162, it's 162, 165, 160, yeah. yeah, that was selling it. Yeah. So the higher it goes away from the 165, mm. the higher the what subsidy. So and all the primary price has been what rising. 120 now. 120, yeah. <laughs> 124. Uh, so, so yeah, it's not you know it's not a record calculation, record science calculation. It's just there. It's going to happen. Mm. And and so when it happens, our major resources is. Um, Died up. Yeah. What happened is our risk cost is what to go and borrow. borrow. You see how everything relates. Yes. And then the IMF is saying that when we borrow debt service to debt service to the which is hundred percent. Hundred percent. And I heard the director of budget, uh, Mr. Kabwe, who happens to my friend. He said, no, 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 it's not that. It's seventy six percent. I, I see mean, that's not how I you know. know. But it's like the the man that was told, uh, you know, your wife just you know contributes everything to the house. No, 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 no. After the $10, she gave me nine. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's like, you know. <laughs> so, let yes. us say everything is interlinked. Yeah. We cannot meet our OPEC quota because of the insecurities in the region. Mm. As a result of not meeting OPEC quota, we cannot gain from the uh, high oil prices now. In addition to not gain from oil prices now, because we can't meet the OPEC quota, the, oil, the revenue coming in from oil export. We are using again to import what mm. PMS, mm. which will sell below market price. price, so on the recovery, and so no revenue is accruing to the, the nation, and because no, re no revenue is accruing to the nation, mm. we have to borrow so to finance funded. operation, and then we have to service that debt, and so the little revenue coming, we are using it to service what debt. Yes. Everything is translated. So uh, as soon as the trade is approaching, uh, as we continue to push, uh, thank God. Uh, 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 Mr. Peter B has been uh, Labor Party. For Labor. We will continue a process of putting them mm. on the spot yes. to hear what's going to happen. As I said in this program, 2023 is going to be a very important year for us. Indeed. And we don't want any, uh, any proxy uh, candidates again. We need to hear how they're going to fix the country. How? Yes. All right, business analyst Chika Mbonichika, thanks for joining Thanks us. a lot. Appreciate you.